Right now, we're living through a full-fledged crisis in our democracy. Now, there are not tanks in the streets, but what's happening right now goes to the heart of who we are as a nation. And I say this not as a Democrat who lost an election, but as an American afraid of losing a country. So as a general matter, if you watch the show, you know we don't cover Hillary Clinton because she's sad and we feel sorry for her, for real. But then she showed up at Yale, which, as you know, is one of the most impressive places in the world with some of the smartest kids on the planet. Obviously, we're very impressed by Yale. They invited her to be the commencement speaker, and so we kind of have to cover it. During her totally not bitter at all address, Clinton pulled out a Russian hat because she's hilarious, and said, quote, if you can't beat him, join him, because that's not a cliche. Of course, we could never beat author and columnist Mark Stein at analyzing this behavior, so we're outsourcing it to him, so our hands are clean. We're not being mean to Hillary Clinton, who deserves our pity. We're letting Mark Stein explain it for us. Hey, Mark. Hey, Tucker. I, I love the way that Hillary is now doing visual comedy. Um, <laughs> she, 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 she's disappointed she didn't get to be president. By the way, I like it when you do a visual gag that you explain it what you're meant to find funny about it to the audience beforehand. Uh, so when she said, this is a Russian hat, um, I think obviously she's at a loose end, doesn't know what to do. I, I think Vladimir Putin uh, should make her chief commissar of state-approved jokes in Moscow. I think she's eminently uh, qualified for it. Um, I personally perfect. would have preferred it. Um, by, the, by the way, I, I do actually think this is uh, the actual Russian hat uh, that Russian intelligence agents left the Fusion GPS dossier under uh, for Christopher Steele to find uh, in a men's room on the Kutovsky uh, Prospect in Moscow. Uh, you're not normally, it's not normally MI6 tradecraft to take the hat, um, but he thought it might make a nice souvenir for Chelsea. Unfortunately, she'd already been given one by the Uranium One guy, so she gave this <laughs> Russian hat. Uh, to her mother, which is very thoughtful. Uh, for my own part, I think it would have been a much more effective routine if she'd worn the, uh, the Shubara, uh, which has been worn, as you know, by Macedonian content farmers, the Macedonian content farmers who cost her the election, uh, or perhaps uh, to establish her authority, uh, the traditional Kausia, uh, originally worn by uh, Alexander the Great, if I recall my school days, and still favoured uh, by Macedonian content farm overseers when they want the masses to cower in terror before them. So I felt she made a poor, like many women at the royal wedding on Saturday, she made a poor headgear choice for this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew that you could bring mirth out of one of the saddest, most heartbreaking moments I'd seen in a long time. Do you think, being honest here for a second, being sincere, do you think Yale is aware of how thoroughly it degrades its own already eroding reputation by inviting someone like this to be the commencement speaker? Well, yeah, I, I do think as a serious matter that partisan politicians when they're invited to give commencement addresses, should not talk about partisan electoral politics. Yeah, I mentioned right. Chelsea a moment ago. For some reason, Chelsea gets paid seven, or she did before November 2016, uh, she got paid seven-figure sums to deliver speeches on diarrhea in Africa. Uh, it would have, I, I wouldn't want to hear a speech on diarrhea in Africa for a <laughs> commencement, but I think that's actually more seemly and appropriate for the occasion. <laughs> I agree, unless... <laughs> Less dirty than what we saw. Mark Stein, a genius, self-evidently. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Life is full of unexpected challenges, things that pop up and make you wonder about reality. I mean, is Kanye really okay? <laughs> Did someone bite Beyonce's face? The President of the United States really tweet about, oh, let's not talk about that. Uh... There you've got the Senator from Massachusetts at Lesley University giving a big speech, the commencement day speech. Let's <clears throat> dial in Candace Owens, Director of Urban Engagement with Turning Point USA. Hey, Candace, what did you think of uh, Elizabeth Warren? Uh, she obviously was trying to appeal to the, the kids in the audience by bringing up uh, Kanye and Beyonce and... POTUS as well. What'd you make of it? 
it just makes me want to cringe all the time. I mean, this is quite frankly always what the Democrats do. They pander in every single regard. You can't tell me that she can name even one Kanye West album or that she can name even one Beyonce album, and one of them is self-entitled. So I'm telling you, it's, it's an absolute joke, and it's interesting to me that she goes into a crowd of people and she assumes that everyone she's speaking to is a Democrat. These are the same assumptions that they made during the 2016 election, and they were wrong. Well, it is Massachusetts. It is Massachusetts, that's right. And even if you're in a crowd of people that might be overwhelmingly blue, it does not mean that every single person there understands your jokes or thinks that they're funny. Quite frankly, there are likely some students there that were insulted by her jokes. They should just deliver what people typically do during a commencement speech, something that inspires children in their lives, something that's largely positive, not taking stabs at pop culture that they don't even understand that if, culture if entirely. If only they could actually do that. So she's not the only one making the, the college tour rounds. Hillary Clinton as well at Yale and House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi Take a listen to a little of what they had to say. What's happening right now goes to the heart of who we are as a nation. We have many challenges facing us. I say this not as a Democrat who lost an election, but as an American afraid of losing a country. Today it often feels as if America's greatness and goodness is clouded by ugly language. Today as a person, I'm okay. We cannot allow the negative attitude to be normalized or accepted. No, I'm not over it. I still think about the 2016 election. Candace, talk about inspiring. <laughs> I mean, she is just Ooh. completely lost it. People tend to question Donald Trump's mental health. When are we going to start to ask some serious, hard questions about hers? Seriously, woman to woman, Hillary Clinton, you have got to move on. This is not even about politics anymore. It's not healthy to hold on to something like this whatsoever. She says that she's a strong woman. What sort of a strong woman is not over this a year and a half later and is still crying about the election, blaming people and, and pointing the finger? This is not an example right, of a but, strong woman. Well, she yeah. did say that she made mistakes. That's the first time I've ever heard her say that. That, yeah, it, it, that took a year and a half for her to even admit yes. that. But you have to understand that she is not an example of a strong woman. She was not right. equipped to be the first female president yeah. of the United States. So, uh, Candace, a couple of things. Number one is from you, when you came out with that statement that went viral, and since that time, what's your life been like? And have you heard from the White House about moving forward with possible <laughs> going there on a le legitimate race roundtable? Have you heard any more about that, or are we just going to let, do you think that moment has passed? Oh, that moment has not passed whatsoever. We are in talks with the White House all the time, and what we are doing and what we are planning is so much bigger than I think what people are even expecting. I'm doing this with Turning Point USA. Um, the White House will, of course, help us and facilitate all of our needs. We're going to cause an entire movement in this country. And we've been warning the left, and we've told the Democrats, we are tired of being your victims, okay? We are, we are ready to exit this narrative as black individuals being the victims that they use every four years for votes. I'm going to inspire a, a national movement that we hope inspires people internationally to understand that there is no value in being a victim and there is only value in being a victor. Are you still talking to Kanye West? What is he saying? Absolutely. We're still emailing and he's put me in touch with some other hip hop artists that I am scheduled to meet with and do some on camera work with. Well, well not I, only I read people a story you agree with, right? Right. I, I read a story over the weekend that said that a number of hip hop artists were being asked by other hip hop artists, don't show up at the White House. Yes, um, I'm not sure how, how true that was. I did read that about Meek Mill, and that's unfortunate if it is true, and it's exactly what I talk about. Um, essentially, my idea is that black people are not free to do what they want, are not free to think what they want, um, that there are these confines that we need to break out of, and we need to stop being afraid of being demonized in the media if we do something that could ultimately help black people. Meek Mill should have showed up to the Prison Reform Summit. It was a great day, and it was something that he could have definitely used his voice to help us get some laws passed. Yeah, meanwhile, Spike blasted the president from another country last week so the 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 beat goes on mm -hmm. Candace Absolutely. you're always an inspiration to us always good to see you have a thank great thank you Monday. so much for having me all right yeah. see you soon prominent Democrats are using commencement addresses that are normally about encouraging graduating students to instead criticize and make fun of President Trump I brought a hat too <laughs> a Russian hat <laughs> No, I'm not over it. I still think about the 2016 election. I still regret the mistakes I made. Women again and young people are marching for women's health and disability rights. You're marching for education and gun violence prevention. Marching for dreamers and immigrants.
marching to save our democracy. This is a wonderful crowd. Jerry told me before we came here that it's even bigger, I hate to say this, than it was last year. I don't, I don't know if President Trump will admit that or not. As one of his uh, supporters put it on television, he said, the way I look at it, Donald Trump is chemotherapy for America. Well, in medicine and in science, some experiments are terminated early for ethical reasons. <sighs> Yeesh. Come on. Greg, I want to play Hillary Clinton's one more time and have you yes. tell us what she could have done better to get a more, uh, to have a better laugh. Let's watch. Do we have a hat too? A Russian hat. <laughs> See, no, I'm not over it. <laughs> I still think about the 2016 election. I, I love still it. Regret the thing is, it would have been a great <laughs> joke if she didn't say anything and if she just put it on her head. People would have laughed, but she had to. She always has to telegraph the joke. By the way, you know what? Uh, this is like when you're on the way out as a student. It's a last chance. For them to pelt you with liberal garbage. It's like, you know, before you enter the real world, uh, and none of our advice we're going to give you is actually going to help. But here's a final scoop of nonsense to carry yeah. with you. Anyway, do you know that her, Hillary's agony tour right now is entering its second year? So it's officially lasted longer than her campaign. My her agony tour is longer than her campaign. And lastly, I love these addresses because they're, they complain that the country is under attack and their activism is being suppressed, their vo voice is being suppressed. But you've never seen more expression in your life. No one is stopping them. There's been more activism yeah. and more emotion under Trump than anything. They should be thanking him. I did think it was strange um, watching Al Gore in, in that speech. I understand, I guess, you know, he must go after President Trump. But in two th after the 2000 recount um, in January 2001, he did not go on a grievance tour in any way. He yeah. actually really did help the country, like, calm down yeah. and move that on. That was the only way Gore did help the country, by leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just feel sorry for the students <laughs> that, that had to listen to Al Gore do a commencement. It must have been the most boring thing of all time. Ever. I actually had his running mate, Joe Lieberman, as my speaker, oh. which I thought was boring until I heard Al Gore speak. <laughs> Um, so Hillary, mean. breaking news, Hillary, she says she still thinks about the 2016 election and she's not over it. Wow, we couldn't, we couldn't realize that already, Hillary. Nancy Pelosi says we have to save our democracy. Nancy, it's a republic. She fails that. Jimmy Carter, I thought, was actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the way to do a commencement, and I am available, I'm much more electric than these has been. Uh, the way to oh do a commencement God. is be short and sweet because everybody's really hungover That's and they just want to get out. And then just say a few a story and a, a few points that people can then take to the real world. But it's better to graduate in the Trump economy, I would say, than the Obama economy. Juan, when you give commencement speeches, and you're actually the one who gets invited, um, <laughs> yes, he's mad. do you inspire or do you try to use it for, to like make some sort of news point, like to get on the news? You never no. do that. No one would ever have a speech of you doing that. I, Why well, do they I, do don't, I don't know what other people do, but I don't do it because I think that the reason that you're there, one, is to s congratulate the graduates, their parents, their grandparents. I mean, a lot of people And have inspire. To, yeah, and a lot of people make a great deal of sacrifice to have not only to pay bills, but to encourage those young people. So I, I really am into that and the whole family aspect yeah. of it. But I will say this, Greg, by the way, yes. she was making a joke with the hat. She said, if you can't beat him, join him. So the idea well, no, was... But, I mean, no, I mean, she shouldn't him. have said the Russian... No, no, no. But she did say... Oh, she did, yeah. But, and the second, the second thing about this, this <laughs> business with uh, both Hillary Clinton and then you see these others is they really think this, Greg. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really think that yeah, there is an illness. Which is why we get more, all this material right. uh, to use. PTSD. One thing interesting, Kimberly, was that when Hillary does these speeches and says, you know, it's been a year and a half and I'm not over it, I mean, you know, everyone's... Get you therapist. can't win everything. Yeah, yeah. What kind of an example well, is that? Yeah, it's not a winning example, I'll tell you this so much. And then she's obviously not good at the jokes, poor thing. But when she put the Russian hat on, all I saw was like, oh, yeah, uranium won. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? So, you good know, one. the Clintons, like more, you know, and look at the Clinton Foundation. That's like going down the tubes. They're not getting any money. So yep. they're just almost out of business. And she's doing these type of things. It's actually hurting the Democrats, like Doug Schoen was on with Varney, and he was like, listen, they just want her to go away. 
because it's yeah. actually hurting their chances of like retaking the house or trying to retake the oval, you know, going forward. And probably the rest of them that are candidates that want to get there, let's line 16 up on the stage for the Democrats are like, you and know, we should, and maybe we can do it tomorrow, but there's a story about Bernie Sanders and how his whole thing is kind of like falling apart. Not him, but his organization. All right, let's the do revolution, it. as they call it.